Hey everyone, my name is Brian Hilbert. I've been a fly fishing guide for 20 years now and currently guide uh, doing walk and weigh trips and float trips here in Colorado and Wyoming. Um, super pumped to be with Avamax today and tie some of my patterns that I've come up with over the years. Um, I full trout all over the Rockies with these patterns we're gonna tie. Uh, these are some of my most confident fly patterns uh, for full and trout both on technical tailwaters and free stones. If you'd like to get in touch with me or have questions about the patterns or would like to book a guide trip, you can find me on Instagram at Brian C. Hilbert or you can contact Avid Max. I'd love to get in touch with you guys. Let's get into tying. Super stoked to be here today and we're gonna tie my Day Saver Emerger. The Day Saver Emerger is similar to my Day Saver Betas except it really imitates the next stage of the hatch. So what we're trying to imitate here is actually that adult mayfly that is emerging from his nymphal shuck. And when you're in the height of a blooming olive or a PND hatch, uh, you're gonna wanna have one of these guys on. I first came up with this idea for this pattern as I was doing a float trip on the Roin Fork River and we were, we were just having great success fishing a PMD hatch. And we had just landed a fish. I was removing the hook over the side of the boat. It was a hot summer day. I was keeping the fish in the water. And I looked down and noticed this PMD nymph was swimming his way towards the surface. And once he got about six inches or so from the surface next to the boat, this little yellow head popped forward on the body. And then his wing buds stuck out and he sat there and just wiggled around for a good 20, 30 seconds. And I made a mental note of that because a lot of our mayfly emerger patterns that you know I'm sure everybody has fished a split back or uh, some type of bubble back emerger that shows the emerger coming out the back of the wing case. When in reality, what I witnessed that day was the adult coming forward out of the shuck. And so I played around with a couple ideas that night and eventually settled on this design here where we're actually imitating, in this case, this is the PMD variation. Um, this is the adult mayfly head that's coming forward with his little wing bud sticking out the back and his nymphal shuck is still intact with a little uh, tail back here. And it, it has just been a lights out pattern for me during any emergence. I, I do this, like I said, in this PMD. I also do it in a bluing olive colorway. You can simply just change the color uh, on the bluing olive. I'll do olive, abdomen, gray, thorax, and I'll use a light olive uh, rubber leg here. And both those patterns have proven to be insanely effective during any emergence. You can fish them under an indicator. You can tie this uh, a foot or so off of your dry fly. Um, really, really, really cool pattern. Very durable and uh, excited to share it with you guys here today. That's the Day Saver Emerger. We're gonna get into tying it. All right, so for a hook here, we're gonna tie this on a Tiemco 2488. I do this pattern anywhere from size 16 for the PMDs all the way down to 20. On the bluing olives, it'll be more in the 18 to 20 range. If you get any smaller than a 20, it's a little bit difficult tying in that head. It certainly can be done, but um, Usually I live in that 16 to 18 here for the PMDs. Uh, if you guys are on the East Coast, uh, this is a great sulfur merger as well. You can tie it in a 14 or even bigger if you want. For thread, I got some brown 6.0. And we're gonna start again, right there where we want our abdomen to end. Kind of at that new third mark. And I wanna keep this thread really, really flat as I build this abdomen. I'm gonna achieve that by twisting this bobbin if I'm looking down counterclockwise. This thread is composed of a bunch of small itty bitty fibers that are all twisted together to make a rope. And if we spin this counterclockwise, it's gonna unwind that rope and make it flat. And that's what we're going for is a nice slender, nice slender flat thread wraps. Now for the tailing shuck, we're gonna use this Vivas body quill in tan. This is my preferred mayfly tail material. I like it for a couple reasons. Number one, it's um, very sparse material. It's also incredibly durable and has a little bit of translucency, which matches that, um, that real imitation. I'm gonna just cut a short strand from the spool. And with my 
thread uncorded, I'm gonna lay this on top and do a light turn, capturing that and then drawing it to length so it ends right there where I started my thread. I'm gonna wrap rearward. You can notice my thread wraps are nice and flat. I'm lifting this Vivas body quill up and towards me to keep it on top of the hook. I'm gonna wrap this into the bend a little ways and then return that thread back to our starting point just with some flat touching turns. Now the abdomen is gonna be composed entirely of thread and I'm gonna uncord my thread here and build a taper. I'm gonna achieve that taper by doing a series of thread wraps where I'm gonna go three quarters of the way down the shank of the hook with nice touching turns and then I'm gonna come back up. I'm gonna go down to halfway and then back up. And then we're gonna go quarter and back up. And you can see what that's given us is a nice carrot shaped tapered abdomen, exactly matching the naturals. I'm gonna uncord my thread again. And I'm gonna do some touching turns just to smooth everything out and return my thread back here where we started the tail. I'm gonna lift my tail up and I'm gonna do a turn right underneath. So we're right at the base of that. I'm now gonna turn my vise to the side here and the, the rib is actually gonna be thread. And just like we uncorded the thread to make it flat, this time we're gonna cord it up. So if I'm looking down on my bobbin, we're gonna spin this to the right, so clockwise. What this is gonna do is tighten that thread up like a rope to make it more pronounced. And we're gonna advance our thread in open turns to make a rib on this fly. I like turning it to the side here. It eliminates a couple of hazards for me. Number one, it doesn't have my bobbin clank against my vise and interrupt the spin. It also keeps my thread from falling off the back of the hook and disturbing the tail or just moving that tail or capturing it all together. Simply turning this to the side is a nice feature of having a rotary. We're gonna cord that up several times until I see this bobbin start to raise up. That way I know I'm good and tight. And I'm gonna take my vise and return it back to the normal position. And then we're gonna advance our thread with some open turns to segment the abdomen. You'll see that gives nice subtle segmentation there just like we would with wire. I'm now gonna uncord the thread and we're gonna change thread colors here. We wanna make sure we uncord this before we whip finish this off and change threads. Um, if you've ever tried to whip finish thread that's round really, really tight, the knot doesn't seat all the way and a lot of times it ends up just breaking on you. So if you do a couple of twists there counterclockwise, it'll uncord everything and make it to where you can uncord everything and uh, whip finish that off cleanly. We'll take this opportunity now to trim the tail. I'm gonna do this about the length of the abdomen. Kind of fray that up a little bit. Now for durability and to enhance that segmentation, I'm gonna use some Solarez Bone Dry. This is a UV resin that's very, very thin. It cures very, very hard. You can certainly use the UV resin of your choice. Um, I recommend just as thin as possible. My personal preference is this Solarez Bone Dry. I'm going to coat the entire abdomen and I want to make sure I'm not necessarily building bulk. We're just really saturating this with that UV resin. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds to soak in a little bit. I'm going to take my index finger and just kind of dab off the excess. Again, we don't want to create a lot of bulk with that resin like a Pertagon. We're really just coating that thread to make it more durable and to make that segmentation pop. Once I'm satisfied, I'll come in with my UV light and I'm just going to use the rotary feature here and get all surface area of that abdomen cured up. After a few seconds there, it looks good. And we're gonna switch threads here. I'm gonna move to a tan uni ADOT start right behind the hook eye and bring that thread rearward right to the front of the abdomen there where we left off. All right, 
I'm going to uh, tie in our next material, which is just some Life Flex or Span Flex. Um, you can use really whatever rubber leg material you prefer. Um, this yellow is perfect for our PMDs. So I'm just gonna cut a strand of that off. And this stuff can be a little challenging to work with, but with a little practice, it's not too bad. I'm gonna bring it in right on top of the hook, kind of angled towards me slightly. I'm gonna capture that with a turn of thread and I'm gonna let thread torque take it over the top and center itself. I'm then gonna wrap rearward to where I want my thorax to end, which is about that one third mark. A good kind of rule of thumb is if my thread is hanging down, it's just in front of the hook point here. I'm then gonna return my thread all the way down here to the hook eye with some touching turns, cleaning up the remainder of that material. Next, I'm gonna tie in some floral fiber in gray. And I'm looking for about, on this 18, having about 15, maybe 15 to 18 of these fibers. I'm gonna cut them right off the hank. And I'm gonna trim them square for our tie-in. We're gonna start right back behind the hook eye, just like we did with the previous material, slightly towards us, allowing thread tension to center itself on top of the hook. And we're gonna wrap that all the way back. Then we're gonna come forward and we're gonna build a thread abdomen here. I'm going for a little bit of a football shape, keeping this material right on top. Come over here, right in front of the eye. Now, for tying off these materials, <clears throat> excuse me, for tying off these materials, I'm gonna take this out of the vise and reposition the orientation to where that eye is a little more up. This is gonna help prevent things from wanting to slide off the front of the fly here. I'm gonna take those floral fibers forward first, and similar to my day saver betas, we're gonna secure these with minimal thread wraps. I want to capture that right on top of the hook with one turn of thread. I'm then gonna come in and roughly split these. You can just kind of eyeball them, don't necessarily need to count them. I'm gonna take the far side clump and pull it away from me as I take my bobbin and pull it tight and secure that on the far side with a turn of thread. I'm then gonna take the remaining clump, pull it towards me and rearwards, and I'm gonna capture that on the near side, okay? I'm going to then take a couple of turns just to make a little bit of a flat spot here for this um, yellow life flex to be able to rest without crowding that hook eye. So the next material we're gonna tie in is just some crystal flash. We're gonna grab a strand of this. This is in a blue dun color. I'm just gonna grab a, a short couple inch piece And what I like to do here is I'm gonna hold it on the near side and I'm gonna do a turn of thread, pull that to the far side, grab the remaining piece, it's rolling on me, there we go. Grab the remaining piece and pull it to the near side so that both those are going off to either side like so. Okay, now to secure this Life flex. What I like to do is grab this with my thumb and index finger, and I'm gonna use my middle finger on the front of the hook eye and pull this forward and slightly towards me. It's gonna to wanna to roll away from you. We're gonna secure it with one turn of thread, and then I wanna check its position. We wanna make sure this is right in the middle. That one looks pretty good, you can see there. I'm gonna throw one more turn in, kinda bring in my thread rearward on this head. It's really important that everything we do from this point forward is working back with our thread away from this hook eye, or else you'll end up crowding this or having it fall forward. You still wanna be able to tie the fly on once it's complete. Now we're gonna make the head on this fly by looping this um, 
my flex around, I'm gonna make the tiniest little loop and push it down towards the hook eye like so. I know my fingers are kinda of in the way there, but you should get the idea of what about what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna bring my thread up and implement a pin trap. And a pin trap is just, I'm gonna bring this thread up tight and I'm gonna wedge it in between my thumb and index finger, bring that thread around loose around the material and under the hook and pull. And what that's gonna do is that is going to, oops, slipped away from me, around, boom. That is gonna allow me to capture that right on top and make that little looped head that we're looking for. We wanna really imitate that PMD adult that is emerging from his nymphal shuck, just sticking his head out. Now, we wanna make sure that this lands right on the top of that floss. And sometimes you gotta argue with it a little bit, but that looks pretty good. At this point, all that's left to do for the tying portion is whip finish. I'm gonna come right over and whip finish right on top of where we left off. A three turn whip finish. I'm gonna pull that snug. Trim my thread. I'm then gonna bring up the life flex and pull it kind of medium tight, trim it off right behind that whip finish. We're gonna take all of this floral fiber and crystal flash and preen these up to be more emerging wings. And I'm gonna trim those about one and a half times the length of that wing case. Just went a little long on this side. I'm gonna turn it sideways here and just clean, clean that up just a little bit. There we go. All right. Now to just hold everything together, I always finish this fly off with our UV resin. Again, I like Solaris Bone Dry. I'm just gonna get the sides of it The top of that knot where we whip finished, the side over here. Bring in our UV light, cure all that up. And we have a finished day saver emerger. Once you get uh, working with that floss material down. It's actually a pretty simple pattern to tie. Um, a lot of fun to fish. There's something about this yellow head coming forward that the fish really key in on. I'm not sure if it's just a more vulnerable looking insect, um, but I have had just some outstanding success with this. Uh, you can fish it on a regular nymph rig. You can put it off the end of a dry fly, like I mentioned. Um, one of my favorite things to do is just have this you know, six to eight inches off my favorite PMD dry. No weight, just let the weight of the hook sink it down an inch or two and have clients just look for a boil around their fly. When they see that, that fish just smoked the Stay Saver Emerger. Had a lot of success with it, even in some of Colorado's toughest tailwaters. So highly encourage you guys to tie some of these up. All the materials are available to purchase here at Avid Max. I'd love to have you guys uh, Post pictures of, of your day saver emergers, either tying them or in fish's mouth and tag Abamax and tag me, Brian Hilbert on Instagram. Would love to see that stuff. If you have any questions about tying this pattern, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys out there and uh, hope you tie a couple of these up because this is an, an absolute game changer. Thanks a lot for having me guys. And we'll see you on the next one.